Welcome to Enterprise Tech Content Creators Podcast. My name is John Seaton, and in this podcast, we'll talk to creators who are making content specifically for social media in the enterprise space. We're going to talk about how they get started, what are the challenges, and what are the benefits. So the goal really is to help you get inspired to start creating content. Today, I'd like to welcome Sal Lamora. He's a systems architect at Cisco. He actually has over 9,000 YouTube subscribers on his channel called Cisco Sal. So Sal's a little bit different than some of the other folks that I have in the podcast in that he's on one of the hardest platforms to actually grow into the thousands. He's got over 124 videos posted there over the past nine years. And he's actually monetizing that channel. And we'll talk about the millions that he's making. No, I'm kidding. He'll talk about um, the monetization that he is uh, achieving on that channel. So Sal is what I call an OG, orig original gangster content creator, because before LinkedIn even was born or even anybody's mind or was even a thing, he was posting on YouTube. So Sal, welcome to the podcast, sir. Hey, John. Great to be here. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. So, you know, this is all about um, helping people understand what it takes to create content. The focus of my other uh, podcast up until this point has really been around LinkedIn because LinkedIn seems to be the hot new platform. But it seems that most of your focus has been on YouTube, right? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I th And I think LinkedIn is a great platform as well. And a lot of times I'll, if I create something on YouTube, sometimes I'll post it on LinkedIn. Um, I think the big thing there for people that are starting out and trying to figure out what platforms they want to work with is, you know, with what you're talking about, is it a push or is it a pull? I think LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, a lot of those social media platforms out there are a push. Let's, let's put something out there and kind of spray it out to everybody. Mm -hmm but they're going to be kind of short lived, right? Those videos that people are going to see, they're probably only going to last a couple of days, maybe a week tops, and then they're not going to come up in your feeds anymore. Where with the content that I was really creating, it's more of a, I figured out how to do something. Let's record it. I'm sure other people have these questions out there, but let's make it searchable. So let's put it on YouTube. So that way, when somebody has a question on how do I configure a wireless access point, how do I reset a wireless access point? Um, that stuff is out there for people to find and then they can click on it that way versus, Hey, let's, let's just spray it out there. Like not, there's not a lot of my content out there that I'm putting out that I think people will just watch, you know, one time. And that that's kind of it. It's going to be more of, Hey, we need to go do something. I know Sal is going to have his channel and I can find that content on there. I really like that analogy that you said, push versus pull. Because a lot of times stuff created for LinkedIn, like you said, it it, it has a short a short lifespan, right? Because it's not really searchable unless you go to your your profile and somebody knows to kind of scroll through things you've posted. The difference with YouTube is that it is a knowledge base. People go there to learn how to do stuff. Uh, so I think that's that's an important distinction of when you create stuff for YouTube versus LinkedIn. I think the other distinction, and you probably agree with this, is in terms of length, right? LinkedIn, you can only post, I think it's 10 or 11 minute videos. No one posts anything that long in there because the attention span on LinkedIn is very short. So right. when you create your content, you know, what's the time frame you're really looking at uh, for your videos? For a lot of time for me, I, I don't really set a time frame. It's however long it's going to take for me to accomplish what needs to be done in that video. And one of the really cool things about YouTube is you can actually take a look at like the statistics, how long yeah. people are watching your videos for and like where they spend time on your video and everything. And a lot of times when I'm doing those like how to videos, you know, you'll get the initial drop in the beginning because people click on it like, ah, oh, this isn't really, really right. what I wanted. But you'll get once that initial drop is done. A lot of those how to videos are pretty consistent all the way through because nine times out of 10, they're probably working on something right in front of them and they're going through my video slowly, like as yeah. I'm doing it, they're doing it on the side here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you've been doing it for nine years, what got you started? 
Really, it was a necessity. So I used to cover um, what was called commercial territory as a sales engineer. And a lot of that was, hey, I'd have a thousand accounts out there and mm -hmm. it was repetitiveness. I was doing the same demos over and over and over again. And at one point I was like, I can't scale anymore. I just, I can't do it. I can't do the right. same demo of prime infrastructure or whatever it was, mm -hmm. you know, a, a thousand times in a day. So I said, okay, let me record myself doing this once. And at that time, you know, I had so many customers, I was getting emails at all times of the day. And one of the big things that I really wanted to uh, do was really meet customers where they are and the time of day that they wanted to work. And I think that, you know, kind of accelerated through the pandemic. No one really has schedules anymore. And it's more like work-life integration versus that work-life balance. So I was really big on, okay, you're sending me an email at nine o'clock at night. I've done this video, you know, a year ago or six months ago. Let me drop you a link to this video. Yeah. So that way, you know, you scratch that itch immediately and you're not waiting. Okay. Hey, well, what does your calendar look like for, you know, three days from now or next week? And then we get on the phone and then we're fumbling through, I couldn't get on the WebEx for five minutes. And, you know, you kind of avoid all that. You give them the information that they're, that they're trying to get then and there. And I think that accelerates the sales process as well because, yep. Oh, wow. This is, this is perfect. Now I can have a more meaningful conversation with that person mm -hmm. in three to four days. Like, Hey, you saw the video, you saw what was capable here. What questions do you have now? Instead of going through the video and or, or, sorry, instead of going through the demo live and then, you know, the reaction you always get at the end is, Oh, that was a lot of information. Let me digest it. Yeah. I need to absorb it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. At, least, at least if it's a video, they can go back in that video too, like rewatch a certain part. Your message is always going to be buttoned up a lot better when you're doing a video versus trying to do it live. Some, you know, sometimes you do a demo live and you go to click on something that doesn't work or doesn't work. it takes 15 seconds for it to load, right. Right. which isn't a lot, but in the, you know, in the moment you're sitting there like, is this thing going to ever load yeah. With video? I can cut that out a little bit. I can drop those 15 seconds of, of dead air. And, you know, it saves time really all around. So the things that you're touching on is way different than a lot of the other conversations about posting content on LinkedIn. What I'm hearing here is, and I've done the same thing, one, it allows you to scale, right? If you've got a lot of customers, rather than repeat the same thing over and over again, if you have a video, you can just point them to the video. The other thing that you mentioned is, is it's a primer. It's sort of like, here's your homework. Look at this first, then we'll get into get into things. So I think, you know, those couple of things are really good examples of why in this environment, when you've got a lot of customers, especially when things are virtual, the only way that you can scale is to, um, well, one of the ways you can scale is to create videos. And so that's part of the reason why it's important to build up those skills, because it's another tool in your toolbox to be able to sell more stuff at the end of the day, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it, it's not all about sales for me either. I think one of the, the mantras that I live by is if I figure something out, mm -hmm. share it with the world. Because I'm sure there's other people out there that are going to have the same question. And hey, if I can help somebody else out, that's awesome. I mean, you know, I do a lot of videos focused around Cisco, but I've got videos of me cutting a foam board. And I'm like, man, yeah. no one ever thought to use this type of knife before to cut foam board. I should share it. I'm not going to get a sale off of it. I'm not selling foam board, right. I'm not selling knives, but I thought it was, you know, a really good piece of knowledge that other people can, you know, use. And it's crazy. That's like one of my most viewed videos is me cutting a piece of foam board and figuring out that using this, this specific knife cuts foam board really well. Well, last time I looked, your top video was how to get rid of that hum with uh, <laughs> certain types of lights, right? Yep, that was the other one. When I bought a new house and the lights were buzzing like crazy, I'm like, what is going on? And figured out the different dimmer types that you actually need to get rid of that. So I think that speaks to your brand. So, you know, what is your brand? It sounds like you're just looking to simplify and explain, you're like the top explainer of things, right? I think I think that's that's kind of where it's kind of morphed into. You know, I started mm -hmm. with just a necessity, like, man, I, I just can't scale anymore. Yeah. Um, and now it's really kind of what you said is let's take these complex topics and topics that people have a lot of questions on and let's make it concise and let's make it 
and a process that people can follow and make it easy for the consumers. Got it. So let's talk about tools that you use. So, um, you know, given that you're posting on YouTube, the impression might be that you've got to use these really complicated tools to be able to post on YouTube. So you must have like a $5,000 camera and multiple lights and soft boxes. Tell me about your toolkit. <laughs> so right now it consists of a Yeti microphone. Um, and that's it. I mean, I've used little eyeball cameras before. I've used the camera inside my Mac. Lately, I've been using my iPhone camera. I think this does a really good job of capturing mm -hmm. video. But a lot of the stuff I do too is a lot of screen recordings. And you don't really need anything great for that. I think right. a good audio signal is important because you want people to make sure that they can understand you when you're talking and it's clear. You're not getting some weird hum in the background and people can really follow along. But you know, it's, it's again, I think it's a little bit different if I was posting something on LinkedIn, um, you know, and I need to catch people's eyes. Yeah. Probably the video quality and stuff like that probably does make a little bit of a difference, but when you're doing more stuff on your computer and you're getting mm -hmm. people to try to follow along with you, I don't know if this is my, you know, my face isn't crystal clear. Is it going to make that much of a difference? They're probably here trying to figure out how to load MPP software on a phone you know, they really probably care about more that the PC looks good versus right. you know, my face. And the audio is really important too, right? They right. say video's forgiving, but audio isn't. So exactly audio mic. So what do you use for like your thumbnails are really good. So you must have a subscription to Camtasia, some other program out there. Is that, is that so right? So for the video editing, yeah, I definitely use Camtasia for the video mm -hmm. editing. I started off in iMovie and that was fine. It was a little bit limiting when you try to get into multiple tracks and stuff. Um, and I tried a couple different pieces of software out there. Camtasia was kind of one that I settled on. It wasn't a lot. I think it was like maybe a hundred bucks or something like that. I think that I spent on it. Um, but there's like a lot of tutorials out there on how to do different things. It's a really intuitive piece of software. You can do different tracks. You can add text in really easy. You can make transitions uh, pretty quickly. So I've been using that a lot for recording. Um, another tool that I used previously before I bought Camtasia was OBS. Mm -hmm. It's just it's open source, like, right? Yeah, it's open source. It's just a recording a piece of software. Um, you know, I use that a lot too. Um, and then for the thumbnails, it really, I use PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. I figured out, you know, what the aspect ratio was. I built a slide off that aspect ratio in PowerPoint. And then just kind of put the pieces together. I usually just take like a, a snapshot out of a video that I did, or just take a picture of something and then put it on the PowerPoint slide and then just kind of manipulate it a little bit from there. All right. So let's talk about the benefits, right? We kind of alluded to that in the beginning. So it sounds like um, there's not a lot of investment in gear. There's obviously investment in time. So what's the typical amount of time that it takes because you're doing more long form stuff. So, so I imagine it is some investment in time to get those videos done, right? Yeah. And, and it depends on what I'm doing. The way that I typically like to create content is, you know, I'm doing something for a customer already. Mm -hmm. For me, that just gives me, you know, enough scale and enough time to put something together as I'm doing this for a customer. So I did all the research and everything. I had to show a customer, X, Y, and Z, what does this look like? And maybe I've gotten that question two or three times before. So at that point, that's when I go ahead and I, and I start recording the video. So you kind of, your research time, which is probably for me, the longer part, you know, some of these videos that I'm doing, I'll research for hours, if not days, um, because I really need to know what the heck I'm talking about for a customer. Right. The recording of it, really isn't that big of a deal because once I have everything researched, I don't really need a script. It's all fresh in mm -hmm. my head. I just need some basic bullet points, like make sure I talk about this, make sure I talk about this, make sure I talk about that. And that's kind of it. And then I'll sit down and I'll record it. And let's say it's a 20 minute video. It might take me, let's say two hours to record that video. Um, versus, Hey, it wasn't something for a customer then. Okay. I need to, first research it. And again, that could take a couple hours and then I need to sit down and I need to record it. And that's another couple hours too. So I kind of share the responsibilities with my day job 
plus then just having to record the video. Okay. All right. So let's talk more about the benefits of doing that. So it's a lot of investment in time. And so when you think about uh, the, the benefits, one is could be you're building your brand. So if you ever go into a customer you haven't met before, have you ever had the case where they're like, oh, I've seen your stuff and you give yeah. you some credibility? Yeah, so that's pretty Yeah, cool. all, all the time. And it's it's pretty crazy too, uh, especially when I was in territory. Because um, there's there's not a lot of good resources out there, especially if you go to like Cisco.com and you're trying to mm -hmm. find different documentation on how to install something or, um, you know, I did a, a lot of stuff on like the Catalyst 9300 switches. And I remember walking into customers and them, and them being like, hey, I just saw your video on like mm -hmm. the differences on the Cat 9300s. Right. I think I think this is the platform that I want to go with. And like, I didn't have to say anything. And I, you yeah. have like instant credibility when you walk in the door and you just kind of validate what their thoughts are already. Like, okay, you want to go with the 9300 over the 9200. Tell me why you came that, to that decision. Well, in your video, you talked about that I can do containers on it. And you talked yeah. about the higher backplane on it and the stacking capabilities for the power. And I was like, okay, you know, if those things are important to you, then I would agree that, you know, is the correct solution for you. Um, and I think too, if people see you for whatever reason on YouTube or these social platforms out there, it does, it really does give you like instant credibility walking in somewhere. And if you think about how p people buy things in their personal life, if I'm buying a new car, where, where am I going to do my research, right? I'm going to go on YouTube and look at comparisons and understand what the product is. And so there's no reason to believe that IT professionals aren't doing that as well, right? So if you can educate them and, and, and show them the the advantages and disadvantages or how something works i think that goes a long way and they like it when it's not marketing right a, right a marketing right video. and that, oh, that's the other thing too like i think i even put it in my my bio like i'm here to give you the real deal like yeah. i'm not i'm not gonna give you some watered down version right. you know I'll, i've pointed out little things on cisco switches and other products from like mm -hmm. mm, you know mm -hmm. this language isn't correct and you know, right. I'm not going to water things down. If, if something's confusing, I'm going to be like, this was, this is not clear guys. Here's the real yeah. deal and what you need to know about it. Yeah. So I think there's such a value for the type of videos. I call them the OG videos, the type of video, the how to videos that we do. Cause like it's that knowledge it's that knowledge base. Right. All right. So let's talk about additional benefits. So we got the fact that you can scale, right? We got the fact that it gives you credibility with your customers. Um, Dude, let, let's talk about the money. You, you're making bank on on views, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so on YouTube, if you get over a thousand followers, so that probably took me five years maybe to get over a thousand mm -hmm. followers. Um, then there's another benchmark too of how many views your videos yeah. get on so a monthly basis. Yeah. yeah, number of hours, whatever it is. I don't even know what that number is. Mm -hmm. Then you can start monetizing. So you click a button, right? YouTube is going to play ads no matter what. Right. So you click a button now and they give you like a portion of that ad revenue. Mm -hmm. And at first I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm going to make so much money. And like, it's nothing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's pennies <laughs> on pennies. It's like, you know, I think I told you when we were prepping for this, yeah. um, like in a given month, you know, with 10,000 followers and however many views I get, like you'll be lucky to break like 20 bucks. Wow. And then they, YouTube doesn't pay you once you, once the month ends, they only pay you once you hit a hundred dollars worth of ad mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. So $20, it could be like six months before they send right. like a hundred dollar check. Right. Well, then you got to cash it in the singles and then, you know. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> All right. Let's talk a little bit more about benefits, but I want to kind of switch it to Cisco marketing and, you know, the support that you get or the uh, endorsements, if you will. You know, one of the, my favorite videos that you did was when our Pen One office in New York City opened up, you were able to do a tour with Bob Cicero and it was a pretty extensive tour uh, of, of that location. So how'd that come about? Cause I think, you know, in terms of build, get, getting that other level of credibility, sort of being endorsed by Cisco and, you know, the marketing machine, good and bad. Uh, so can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So that, that was an interesting one. Um, I got involved 
it with the social teams probably three or four years ago, I want to say at this point. Mm -hmm. And at that point they were like, Hey, you know, we kind of like what you're doing on YouTube. We could use, you know, you and a couple of videos. And if you could check kind of what we're doing on our site too, because you know, the marketing team, the communications team, they're not, they're not the most technical people, right? They've right. got backgrounds in right. communications and marketing. They have no background in engineering or anything. So they're working for this technical company. And sometimes the content that they put out, you know, they might use the word wrong word. They might call something right. a switch when it's a router, or, you mm -hmm. know, they, everything's a router. They'll call a wireless access point a router, things like that. So I was trying to help them coach them a little bit on, Hey, yep. Would this resonate with your viewers and making sure that the videos were technically accurate and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, around that time I'm helping them out. I pulled Alexis in, you interviewed Alexis, yeah. uh, in your, I think one of your first videos here got her yeah. going with some of that stuff and, you know, her stuff exploded. Her stuff is way bigger than anything I've ever done, but yeah. you know, Same great, here. great to see that. Yeah, and then, um, you know, they were like, Hey, Sal, you, you live in New York. Can you go into the new Cisco office in Manhattan and, you know, record a couple of videos for the social media team? And I'm like. I live in New York, but I live in Rochester, New York, which is like six hours away from New York. That's it close. Exactly. So I'm like, if I'm going to go down there, like I got to make it, you know, more beneficial to myself too, that I'm not just walking around with an iPhone taking 30 second video clips. So we started strategizing on what that would look like. And, you know, I, what I kind of came up with is I really wanted to make an experience that if people couldn't get down to the Penguin office, we can kind of give them that experience by watching the video and kind of on the flip side of, of that. And something that I didn't really think about when we were doing it was the enablement for Cisco account managers and Cisco ASEs as well. Um, I got right. so much good feedback that like, dude, I didn't know we were doing any of that stuff in our briefing center. And now I like understand what we're doing. It helped train a lot of the account teams out there on what was possible. And it's also that teaser video to get people into mm -hmm. the office. Yeah, that was great. And of course, you know, of course, Alexis took it to the next level and did a live stream from New York, which right. takes a lot of guts, right? Yep. You're doing it live. Um, yeah, so that's, that's great. So one of the other things about YouTube, same thing with LinkedIn, but uh, on YouTube, as well as engagement. So I imagine when you post, especially if it's a how to video, you're getting questions from folks. Um, do you get a lot? And then how do you manage that? It comes and goes. Um, sometimes, a lot of the times, it's the same questions, which is interesting because if they're going to comment, you think they would read some of the the comments prior. Scroll up, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, a lot of times, it's it's simple stuff. I mean, I talk about yeah. this stuff every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of questions on this switch or that switch or DNA licensing was another popular one where I had a lot of questions. So I've just been kind of you know handling the questions as they come along. On any given day. I might get like one question. Sometimes I'll go two or three days without a single question. So I've got 124 videos up there, I think is what you saw. Yep. And like, you know, one question a day or one question every other day, it really hasn't been too much to handle. Right. And sometimes they're just comments. Yeah. So for those, I just, you know, hey, give you a thumbs up. Thanks for commenting on the video, stuff like that. Um, right. It's rare that it's like, oh man, this is a loaded question. Like I got to spend some time researching it. But I mean, I will, because, you know, if, if there's a customer out there that has a question like that, you know, I think it deserves an answer. So I'll definitely spend the time to do that. Um, sometimes it gets into that gray area where like, hey, man, this is kind of going into roadmap stuff. Right. And I'll send them a message on the side and be like, hey, who's your account team? What company are you with? Let me just connect you with your account team. They could pull in a PSS or a TSA or somebody to, you know, really go through this with you and what that looks like. Great. So you got any, you know, as we wrap up here, any uh, tips or best practices for someone who's looking to get started? You know, I would say your, your, your area of expertise is long form. Let's create that knowledge base of how to's. What would be your advice? My advice is, you know, think of social as, as really everything. It's not just YouTube. It's not just LinkedIn, right? Try to figure out what's right for you. Um, you know, if you're really into doing a podcast, I think that's a great place to start. You can do a podcast, right. you know, blog posting, you know, that's still a form of social media. If you're a really good writer, 
you know, you can start off with that. It doesn't have to be video, you know, is the only thing that's out there. So I think that's the number one piece of advice is kind of think about all the different social platforms out there, even Reddit, you can go out and answer questions on Reddit and, you know, that's still getting your name out there. Um, so, you know, you know, go ahead and do that. The other thing is you don't need all this equipment to get started. We talked about it before. If you have some kind of knowledge and you want to get a message out there, do it right. Like, if you don't put that message out there, you don't tell people what's going on. No one's ever going to hear it. It doesn't really matter how good or bad the quality of that was. The message is never heard. Right. So start with whatever equipment you have um, that's out there. And yeah, those would probably be the top, top couple things there to, to think about. And, um, you know, going back to two, what I talked about, you know, from a time commitment wise, you know, try to balance your workload like that too. Like if you did do research on something, don't just let that knowledge die with that one customer, get that knowledge out there for other people to, to hear that piece of advice as well. Cause I'm sure there's other people out there that need it too. Yeah. I think what you're referring to is two words that come to mind when I've learned from talking to you today is one is scale. It allows you to scale. It allows you to amplify, right? You can amplify that message. Like you said, if you did a lot of hard work to, be able to explain something to one customer, chances are there's a lot of other customers that can use that same message. So, you know, you yep, can replicate exactly. that message real easy. And then you brought up Reddit. So Reddit's is a whole nother area. I haven't even. <laughs> Did you get on the IPO it? yesterday? Oh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it IPO yesterday. I got to go look at that. <laughs> that was one of my things to do. But yeah, I mean, the Reddit thing is a whole nother area of social where you can, um, I guess, uh, 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 show your expertise in a much more informal way because you're really just having a conversation and answering questions, right? Right. And you you build up credibility that way. Well, Sal, um, a lot of good nuggets say. I want to thank you for uh, agreeing to participate in my experiment, right, which is uh, tech content creators. I think he gave all of us some really cool insight. Hopefully that'll help inspire some other folks to take that leap to start just go out there and start creating content and learn how to reap the benefits uh, of when you do so. So with that, Sal, I'd like to thank you again for, uh, for joining us today. All right, John, appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Thanks.